welcome to the See or Not to See, and today we're going to be talking about Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Or as I like to call it, the way to kick a dead horse. Okay, okay, so in this movie we have Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, also known as the busty redhead that we talked about in my Jurassic World review. Um, if you haven't seen that, go see that because it's a good review. It's very in-depth and it's very well covered by my friends Ryan, Daniel, and I. So, anyway, done with my shaveless plug. But they're back and I liked them okay in the first movie. I thought they were kind of cardboard cutouts or character or cartoons like, you know, or whatever. But the characters in the first movie kind of were too. So, like, I gave them a pass on that. And, like, I liked them enough. And here, they're okay in this movie too. You know, nothing great. But the new characters that we get in this movie are just... Oh, uh, my God. So, the first of the new characters I want to talk about is the sexist hunter guy. He's played by Ted Levine, and oh my God. Uh, this guy is so stupid in the movie, and he's just like probably the worst hunter ever, and he's just your stereotypical sexist dick white guy. I mean... Come on, they, they didn't even try with this character. And then you have the vet chick played by Daniela Pineda. And oh my god, she's just also this another character they didn't even try with. It's like, we're going to make the most cliched and like, you not even try anything to make these characters likable. And then there's, you got the bitch IT guy played by Justice Smith. Another just... Another cardboard cutout character that they didn't even try to like inject anything like likable about him or anything. Then you have the kid that's in every Jurassic Park movie played by like Isabella Sermon, I think her name is. And then you have the bitch business guy played by Rafe Spall or whatever his name is. And he is just probably, ugh. Just so cringy with like his, like, the way that he's written in his delivery does everything! And then lastly, we have James Cromwell, the farmer from Babe. And I'm not going to say anything like bad about him. Like, he actually does a good job because he's a good actor and I actually really like him. And he actually did a good job in this movie. So let's get into the bad things in this movie because believe me, there are a lot of them. So, like, one thing I wanted, like, that kind of just bothered me when I said about the veterinarian chick is that, like, they try to make her as, like, this really, like, badass, tough person, and they immediately, like, the sexist hunter guy is just like, well, you're a woman, you can't be doing this job, or whatever, and then she immediately throws some bitchy response and tries to act all tough and shit, and it's stuff like that that really gets me mad about when they write characters nowadays. It's just, like, if you, especially with female, like, female chicks, like, if you want to write a badass female chick... You don't automatically need this some old white guy to tell them they can't do it in order for them to prove that they're badass or have them act bitchy to prove that they're tough. It it just doesn't work. I mean, like, in if you I if for somebody's tough, of course they're gonna come off a little bit rough around the edge. Look at characters like Princess Leia, Sarah Connor, like all like the most badass chicks in movie history. And I feel like there's an art to writing that, but they don't do it well in this movie. And I don't like that cliche of just like. You know, oh, like, well, I'm going to say something sexist, and then she's going to say something back to prove that she's, like, can do it. If she was a badass chick, we'd know that she can do it because she's, you know, written well. And I, you know, I'm maybe I'm setting my expectations a little bit too high, but it's just something that kind of bothers me. I mean, Laura Dern in, like, the first Jurassic Park movie didn't have to do anything like that. There was nobody who questioned her about being a woman or anything with the job that she had, and she pulled everything off quite well, and, like, the lines that she said carried a lot of weight, and she was did feel like a badass chick. She wasn't like, you know, like I said, Sarah Connor or anything like that, but she was still a very tough chick. The only time in Jurassic Park where they brought this kind of thing up is with John Hammond says, like, it should be me going because, like, you know, I'm a guy and you're a girl, and she says, like, look, we'll discuss this later, and she goes and she gets shit done. That is so much more clever than saying, oh, you can't do this just because you're a woman. I just hate that line, and I'm sorry for going on a rant. I digress, but, like, I just really hate that kind of, like, lazy writing right there. Also, the hunter in this movie feels a lot like the hunter in, the like, The Lost World, who I actually like that character way more. I thought that he, like, had a lot more charisma, and he had actually had some redeeming qualities at the end. This guy is just a jerk. Which, I mean, yeah, the Jurassic Park movies all had, like, their jerks in it, but there's this, like, 
I don't know, there's something about this guy, he just felt kind of like a ripoff of the Hunter from the Lost World. Also, why the hell does the bitch IT guy or the computer guy, where the hell he is, have to be a bitch? Just because he has glasses on and is a computer nerd or whatever doesn't mean he shouldn't be able to handle himself. That kind of shit pisses me off too. Why does every person in a movie, just because they have glasses or like work on computers or whatever, not, why, why does, why can't they be able to handle themselves? Why can't they be able to like, you know, do shit to like, you know, actually contribute instead of just weighing everybody down? Samuel L. Jackson was a computer guy with glasses in the first Jurassic Park movie and did he do anything that, hold, that held anybody down? No, he got shit done because he's Samuel L. motherfucking goddamn Jackson. God! This whole movie too felt like the Lost World 2.0. Like, I actually like the Lost World. I know a lot of people don't. You can check out my review for that and like hear my thoughts on it. Like, I know that it's not as good as the first one, but I still really enjoy that movie because I feel like it still has like some likability and some like it has a lot of, it's mostly nostalgia for me because I grew up with that movie, but this one just felt kind of just like a rehash to that, just minus a lot of things that I liked about that movie. But there are surprisingly some things that were good about this movie, which I will address. Another thing is, is that there just wasn't enough gore in this movie. Like, I wanted to see some violence and some dinosaurs, like, eating people, and we barely get any of that. Like, in the first Jurassic Park, like, you see Samuel L. Jackson's arm and everything. Like, that movie was brutal. You don't see any of that kind of stuff in this movie. And last thing I will say for the bad things, there was not enough Goldblum. I wanted more goddamn Goldblum in my movie. Like, I feel like we deserve that as Jurassic Park fans to see more Jeff Goldblum. The world needs more Jeff Goldblum. Pretty much, if you saw the trailers, you saw all there was of Jeff Goldblum in this movie. But, for all the bitching that I did, because that's what I do, I bitch about things that don't matter to anybody else on the internet, there were some good things in this movie. For instance, the special effects were way better than they were in Jurassic World. Jurassic World had really poor CGI, and I feel like in this movie it was a lot better. But there are still no animatronics, so that's really disappointing, or if there was, they CGI'd over it. And I feel like they just kind of got lazy with the special effects. And there is one scene that actually almost brought me to tears. It was so well done and like really played on your nostalgia. So I'm not going to spoil it here, but it was really good. And if you saw the movie, you know exactly what scene I'm talking about. Overall, guys, this movie was just, it didn't need to exist. Like, I just feel like there is just... Not much else you can do after Jurassic World. I thought Jurassic World was kind of a nice way to just end things. Like, okay, you did all the possibilities that you could. And now this, like, the direction that they went just feels kind of dumb. And it's just stupid. That's why I give it a not to see unless it's for free on TV or Netflix. Pretty much the only thing that was good in this movie was the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs were cool. But that's just not enough for me. Like... For all the Jurassic Park movies, even Jurassic Park 3 had something around the dinosaurs that we can at least kind of get into. Or at least, like, you know, just enjoy. But there was n not any of that in this movie. It was all just such, like, felt lazy and slopped together. And it just felt like one of my videos. Lazy, slopped together, and done at the last minute for a cash grab. God damn it. Ah, I son of a bitch. Ah. Ah! Oh shit.